Hello, this is Susan Babai. I am going to speak in this episode about the Kitab Hanem, one of the major topics around the production of Persian painting. This is the site of the production of books and storage of books. It's a scriptorium as much as an atelier. It is a place where a number of different skilled people would be joined together in order to produce uh, the works of art that we particularly associate with the great traditions of Persian manuscript production and manuscript painting. These were scribes, painters, illuminators, paper makers, pigment makers, bookbinders, and a large number of other skilled, specialized skilled workers. And that they work together within the environment of the Kitab Khane is one of the issues that I'd like to speak about in today's discussion. So one of the things about it that we uh, want to be thinking about is the variety of objects that come under the rubric of the production of the Kitab Khane. And they include books of classical texts, which are copied in numerous uh, um, copies and distributed, or in unique copies, uh, uh, basically commissioned by uh, the uh, patron, the royal patron of that kitab uh, They could also be single sheet paintings and drawings and calligraphic samples. And in all of these, there is a kitab dar or a head librarian who oversees the production, the design, the sort of planning, if you will. So it's a, it's a major, well-supported, well-supplied uh, um, production center under the, um, the direction of a kitab dar. Very often, the Ketam Dar is actually a great painter, such as Behzad, uh, at the end of the 15th century and beginning of 16th century, uh, but also a number of different skilled artists, scribes, and so forth. Uh, the Ketab Khane um, uh, has, uh, at least uh, in some uh, research, has been shown to be related to the formation of a uh, sort of a, an academy, if you will, called, called Hanlin Academy in uh, Yuan, China, uh, where uh, the, uh, the Mongol descendants of Genghis Khan after the conquest of uh, all of Asia uh, were established as the Yuan emperors. And, uh, to them, the Ilkhans, uh, the subordinate Khans in Iran and Iraq of today, uh, were connected very closely. That uh, Hanlin Academy's role was to produce history books, uh, which would uh, uh, bring out, and, and this has a longer history in China, bring out the reign of particular uh, kings or dynasties. Uh, was an idea that transfers to the Ilkhani uh, Iranian territories and indeed is a project that is inspired uh, uh, or, or inspires rather uh, uh, Rashid din the great physician, historian, statesman, the great vizier of the Ilkhani uh, rulers Ghazan Khan and his successor Uljaitu to establish such a, um, an academy or a kitab khane in Rab -e Rashidi, uh, which was in Tabriz. And um, the kitab khane was among a, a range of institutions uh, that were included in the Rab -e Rashidi. Uh, there, under his tutelage, his authorship actually, manuscripts were produced of Jama al Tabarikh, this compendium of histories, which then um, were illustrated at the same time. It's a very unusual case of uh, a universal history that goes back to the beginning of creation, goes through various religions of the world at the time, 
and histories of Islam prior to the arrival of the Mongols and then concludes with the place of these Mongol rulers across Asia and their particular place within the Iranian cultural history and political history, if you will. Uh, the making of these manuscripts, in fact, the whole of this operation of the Kitab Khane and the Rab al-Rashidi were indeed stipulated in endowment document of Rashid al-Din's, his famous waqf. The production of the books that were made in this Kitab Khane were related directly to the desire to find historical legitimization for these post-Mongol Ilkhani rulers in greater Iran, actually. And it is in that context that we understand Jama al Tabarikh or the production of the Shahnameh manuscripts, which were illustrated at this time to be part of a kind of an imperial curriculum, a, a way of teaching uh, the Ilkhans, these princely clans who were coming from outside the ways of being kings in the Iranian context. That making books actually has been a purview of, uh, of royal production, royal patronage is well known. And that uh, to take pride in one's library, in the production of manuscripts for one's library at the Kitab Khane uh, was a sign of status for rulers across the Islamic lands and especially in the Persianate world. Uh, being bibliophile and literati communities where such luxury manuscripts as we uh, know from the Persian context or Persian speaking context is uh, part of what the Kitab Khane did. We know that major patrons such as uh, Tamarid princes like Ibrahim Sultan or uh, Baisangor Mirza were indeed uh, residing over major Kitab Khane and their own royal Kitab Khane, which produced magnificent copies of manuscripts of the Quran, as in the case of this one for Ibrahim Sultan made in his court uh, Kitab Khane in Shiraz, or uh, the Kitab Khane of Baisangur Mirza, the grandson of uh, Timur, uh, who's uh, a document uh, from a, a, a report, a progress report known as Arzadash broad, broadly, which was written circa 1430 by the head of his Kitab Khane, Jafar Tabrizi, uh, writes, for instance, about the various uh, 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 levels of work accomplished at the Kitab Khane, which includes actually tent makers and architects repairing buildings, but also illuminations and, and paintings and paper making and all kinds of uh, groups of works that were produced, amongst which is the work that a Molana Ali had done, which was uh, designing a frontispiece, he says, uh, with illuminations for a Shahnameh or the Shahnameh of Baisangur Mirza. And his eyes, he says, were sore for a few days. In other words, the work was so intense for this illumination. And most likely what was meant by such a report was to really ask for more money for the uh, operations of the Kitab Khane. I also wanted to point out that these Kitab Khane productions ranged in uh, the kinds of material they, uh, they were able to produce or they were asked to produce, including uh, copies, luxury copies of the Quran and texts of classical manuscripts. And indeed um, uh, they had access to uh, examples of earlier periods or indeed of rival libraries when those libraries were in fact uh, confiscated. So there is in the work of the Kitab Khane implicitly a sense of continuity 
where motifs of a, let's say, a man on horseback hunting could be taken into a number of different periods, texts, manuscripts, individual drawings as here in this right-hand side one, uh, and that they may be motifs that can be transferred into the uh, into a manuscript of the Shahname as much as a manuscript of Hamse of Nizami, uh, in which case uh, even this a subject matter could be uh, carried through with some consistency. In other words, artists' knowledge of past artists, of masters, of different manuscripts is part of the shared knowledge of the Kitab Khane as well that the Kitab Khane production also speaks to a patron's taste and indeed to perhaps preferences for artistic styles is part of the understanding of the production out of the Kitab Khane. So manuscripts made in Shiraz uh, or in Herat speak to the particularity of patronage of the time period and the tutelage of the patron in charge or the person who pays for that kitabhane. So part of this whole thing has to do with historical legitimization, which we see amongst the post-Mongol rulers of West Asia, of Iran, the Ilkhans in particular. It's also about a production of high, high culture, of erudition, Knowledge is prestige indeed, and these are recognized widely in the early modern period from the Timurids and Safavids to Mughals and the Ottoman Kitab Khane uh, uh, institutions. And it's important to understand that each operates within their own confines, their own traditions, but this is a shared culture of high erudition and bibliophile interest. The other point I wanted to share was about what constitutes, in fact, the workings of the Kitab Khane. These are paintings of school scenes, but at least the one on the left-hand side, to a greater extent than the one on the right-hand side, point to the fact that these operations of, for instance, paper making, uh, coloring paper, in this case, these these young men are dipping paper into a vat of color and hanging it to dry. Someone here is burnishing and polishing a paper. There's a scribe here, someone who copies a text. The rest of this painting is about a school scene. There are various things happening, including preparing with Vozu to go uh, say one's prayer. Uh, someone is calling people to prayer, food is being prepared here. A school scene is, is seen on the right-hand side with even a punishment for one of the naughty kids in the, in the classroom. But what I wanted to point out was that the Kitab Khane functioned as a multi-skill kind of an environment. And while we don't have images that would point to the Kitab Khane, we have these kinds of visual tidbits and textual references. And then the survival of unfinished pieces of work, such as we see in, uh, for instance, these two uh, unfinished sheets where the underdrawing had appeared then some general color schemes are put in. Some of the figures may be finished in layer by layer, you would have specialized uh, artists who would carry out these different parts of a painting or a page, just as much as ruling pages, uh, illuminations, uh, copying the text and so forth would work. The Kitab Khane as well included a store of material on paper we know paper was so valuable and work on paper was so highly regarded that none of these pieces would be thrown away. Uh, so there are collections like the Dietz album and there are albums in the top couple in which we find a large number of different kinds of works on paper. 
from underlying sketch of a scene, for instance, of an enthroned figure and attendance to trying out a figure uh, confronted by a lion or finished drawings of some wonderfully uh, imaginative scenes which could be themselves independent drawings as well uh, as uh, sort of preliminary to other work. In other cases, we find these disparate sort of loose uh, pieces of works from drawings to calligraphic pieces to illuminations being put together in a ketabhane, not always recognizable to us as single sheets for albums. And that's, a, that's another product of ketabhanes, putting together albums that could be designed from the beginning to the end to speak to particular wishes of the patron actually with the collection of drawings and calligraphic samples and illuminations and so forth, speaking to a particular taste. Uh, I also wanted to point to the fact that a ketabhane, depending on which period we are looking at, which uh, court uh, ketabhane we are looking at, may represent different tastes within that same ketabhane, or in fact, gather together a number of uh, sort of resonant styles, styles that uh, match the masters. Um, there are some arguments made by scholars about, for instance, the style of painting that dominates the court ketabhane of uh, Sultan Hussein Baibara, in which Behzad, the great master uh, towards the end of the 15th century, was in fact the head librarian and the principal artist. So there are a number of artists whose work may have been in fact directed by Behzad and styles that are inspired by Behzad in fact, uh, of whose work I show you this famous painting of Yusuf and Zuleikha from a bustan of Saadi, which is now in the Cairo's uh, Egyptian National Library in Cairo actually. But I also want to point to the fact that artists may draw inspiration from a number of different sources, including those early 15th century drawings and sketches that must point to the, uh, the links, diplomatic links with China at this time, with Ming China, which we see in this sheet on the right hand side. Moreover, the Ketabhane is more than just a place for the making of books, though that's a major production of the Ketabhane, the name implies it. But also to point out to the fact that perhaps a lot of different designs were produced at the Ketabhane. At least that's what we understand for the most part from the Timorid potential for the Timorid Ketabhane to have produced such things as designs for illumination for which could be transferred also to other media. So for instance, in this painting, which I will come back to, these are details of Behzad's painting of Yusuf and Zuleikha. I'll come back to it in another episode when I want to talk about uh, the representation of space and, and visualization of, uh, of perspective in Persian painting. Here, I want to point out or bring to the attention uh, these different patterns, which are presumably carried out in the form of tiles, for instance, in, uh, in this building, uh, that these are products of the Ketabhane uh, illuminators and Behzad, the mastermind here, but also may relate to illuminations in books, like heading illuminations, and share certain visual characteristics with, for instance, these kinds of very dense patterns of tile work, this kind of a mosaic tiles, in which case I'm just showing you an example from the portal of Timur's palace known as Aksaray near Samarkand, that these may be related in some form or fashion in terms of shared knowledge of design that could be coming out of 
uh, Ketab Khanes, royal Ketab Khanes, uh, is not a matter of uh, a direct relationship, but uh, these evocative connections between, for instance, jewelry maker, uh, this kind of a repoussé floral decoration in the in this uh, Tomorid pendant, and the kinds of details in tooled and gilded binding we find, and this kind of a shared design concepts that may even inspire such works as a carved tombstone on the right hand side. The point I'm making is not that these are all coming from the same artist, but to say there is a shared uh, environment of design production, which could be um, emanating out of the Kitab Khane and also uh, being produced for other uh, skill sets. Tile makers didn't work inside a Kitab Khane, certainly. Uh, but that there are uh, some, there is some evidence of those connected visual material is part of what we understand the role of the Kitab Khane to have been as well. Thank you.